Instead of purchasing the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark IV, there are a number of reasons why you might want to buy one of the higher-end Olympus cameras such as the EM5 Mark III, the EM1 Mark III, or the EM1X. The camera is currently not supported for use with the Olympus webcam software, so you won't be able to use the camera as a webcam. It doesn't have phase detect autofocus, which means it is going to be slower to lock focus in comparison to the higher end models. Having said that, its contrast detect autofocus is the best I have come across and works well when shooting video. The camera doesn't have a microphone jack, so you cannot connect an external microphone to it, but it has an onboard stereo microphone. Audio is recorded in stereo mode at 16 bit bit depth and 48 kHz sampling rate, which is not bad, but a higher audio quality of 24 bit at 96 kHz would have been preferred, which is available on the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark III. The camera eyelets make noise, which is captured in videos. They can be removed, but the part that they connect to protrudes which makes it slightly more difficult to fit into your pocket or a small place. Also, the eyelets do have this small piece of plastic, which is supposed to reduce the noise. But in my experience, the camera still picks up the noise from the eyelets movement, hitting against the camera body. When using manual video mode, auto ISO cannot be used. So if you set the aperture, shutter speed and frame rates, the camera cannot automatically adjust its ISO to get the right exposure. You can switch to one of the automatic modes for video such as shutter priority, aperture priority or program auto and that will let the camera adjust exposure automatically but it is not clear whether the camera uses ISO to adjust exposure or if it also changes aperture and shutter speed which could impact how the video footage looks. Extended ISO settings cannot be used when in video mode, and the menu option is disabled. So the ISO range in video is strictly between 200 and 6400. Settings are shared between video mode and photo mode. So if you set the aperture or shutter speed while in video mode, and switch to still picture mode, those values will be used. The video settings are scattered in different menus. So you can access some options through the menu button, some options through the menu you get when you press on the OK button, and some are accessible through the shortcut button on top of the camera, which shows you the super control panel. Currently the video settings is set to 4K at 24 frames per second. And we are using the super fine video bitrate, which is the highest quality that we can get. So if you want to change this to 60 frames per second, 1080p, then the first thing we need to do is go to the menu and then go to the video menu. And from there, we can choose the video frame rate. So we can choose 30 frames per second which is not exactly what we want, but we can change that in another menu. So we can't go directly to 60 frames per second. We choose 30 frames per second here. And here you have the option between 24, 25 and 30 frames per second. So we're going to choose 30 frames per second here. And go out of the menu. And then if we go back to our menu item here, then we can see that it's still 4K, but this time it's 30 frames per second. So we leave that there. Now we have a few options on where to change this. So if we press the shortcut button on top, 
we get this menu item and here we can choose 4k or 1080p which is the standard so i'm going to choose standard here and now that we have chosen standard then we can go back to this menu and choose 60 frames per second so now we have full hd 1080p at 60 frames per second and also i don't know if you notice it says super fine 60. so if we want to change from super fine to a lower bit rate then we need to press the menu button and then go to the video bitrate option under the video menu and choose a lower bitrate if we want to like fine or normal so let's choose normal here so there's a few different places you need to go in order to change your video settings one is the menu which you can press here and then you can choose the video frame rate and the bitrate but only frame rates up to 30 frames per second and then if you come out of the menu and you press the shortcut button on top here you can choose between 4k and 1080p in this case which we chose 1080p and then there's the ok button so if you press the ok button you see this menu here and you get the option to choose 60 frames per second let me press that again 60 frames per second 30 and uh, so here you have the 720p as well at 30 frames per second so this menu changes based on your options that you've selected in this menu item so if we change this to 25 frames per second and then go out of this menu and press ok then you can see that the options change to 50 frames per second 25 frames per second and 25 frames per second at 720p so i find this quite confusing that i have to go to three different places to change the settings for my video in movie mode the focus points can either be a single small focus point or the entire focus grid whereas in picture mode you also have the option to select nine joint focus points to make up a mid-size focus area When using continuous focus in movie mode, the size of the autofocus box cannot be changed, whereas in picture mode, you can change the size using the on-screen slider. The camera doesn't have a custom setting on the mode dial. So typically on higher end cameras, you get C1, C2, C3, and you can save your settings in there and access it quite quickly with using the mode dial. It doesn't have weather sealing, which the higher end models such as the EM5 and EM1 have. In the first version of this camera, you could change the settings for the number of frames taken at each of the sequential shooting drive modes that option no longer exists in the Mark IV, so there is less room for customization. It doesn't have Pro Capture Mode, which exists in higher-end Olympus cameras. In cameras that support Pro Capture, the camera starts shooting from the moment the shutter button is halfway down and captures up to 35 frames prior to the moment the button is pressed down fully. If you press the shutter button fully down, those 35 frames will be saved to the memory card. Otherwise, they will be discarded. So the Pro Capture feature lets you go back in time to get the exact shot you want out of 35 frames which were taken in the one second leading up to the shutter button being fully pressed. The camera doesn't have a high resolution mode, which is available in the higher end Olympus cameras. High resolution mode allows the camera sensor to shift in different directions and take multiple pictures and then combine them into a single high resolution picture with substantially higher quality. This feature is useful for product photography and photographing still subjects.
the exposure bracketing feature on this camera is limited to either 3 or 5 frames and there is no option to select how many stops of light those frames should differ whereas on the first version of this camera not only could you go up to 7 frames but also the exposure could be customized at one third stops. The SD card slot is in the battery compartment and slightly difficult to access, but considering the small size of this camera, I don't think it could have been fitted anywhere else. You can also transfer files by connecting a USB cable, but since the camera supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, wireless transfer is the easiest option to transfer files. When recording video, the camera splits up the video if the file size goes over 4 gigabytes. So once you transfer the 4 gigabyte files to your computer, you have to stitch them together to get the full video in one file. This is particularly annoying if you want to upload your videos directly to online video platforms without having to do post-processing work on your computer. With the high resolution that this camera provides, as well as the high frame rate, the 4 gigabyte limit will be reached easily. For example, when I shoot video in 1080p at 60 frames per second with the super fine video bitrate compression, the 4 GB limit is reached after around 10 minutes and 40 seconds. The maximum length of video that the camera can record in one continuous shoot is 29 minutes. This is an artificial limit put in place to comply with an EU law which meant cameras that could record videos longer than 30 minutes would be classified differently under EU import tax regulations and therefore would need to pay a higher import duty fee, which would mean a more expensive camera for consumers. This regulation has been abolished, but the camera makers are still abiding by this old regulation, even though it is no longer necessary.